We had a big wait for the classic and muscle car auctions to kind of take place again. Mecham in Kissimmee is one of the bigger auctions of the year. So as many of you have seen over the weekend, very strong reaction, I think, to the, uh, the market as a whole. And we did a post in our BST group that had a great response. So I said, why not have a little sit down and just kind of go over the things that we talk about um, as far as the market goes and what we saw and bring it to you guys. And me and you have been having the conversation. Um, there's really no benchmark to see where the classic and muscle cars have been from the time COVID hit until now. Yes, there's been some auctions, but this really is one of the top auctions of, of the year and one of those benchmark auctions where you can really assess where things are at. And uh, it blew us away from some of uh, the results that we've seen. Yeah, uh, usually it's the Barrett Jackson, uh, Scottsdale, the Mecham Kissimmee. They get the top quality cars, very rare cars, and bidders and uh, sellers from around the world. So everybody was anticipating this uh, because people just didn't know, like, is there still going to be a market for these cars after all this? You know, people are losing their jobs, unemployment rates are sky high. Uh, you know, it just was no man's land. But uh, this, this proved that the collector car market, uh, best been great cars are still there. And we were hearing a lot of the uh, people are dying out of the classic cars, the muscle cars, and I think we saw a resounding no to, to that yeah. answer. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys, um, you know, my age and older guys were thinking like, you know, the, the muscle cars that have 60s and 70s, the classics that have 50s, uh, guys were aging out and, you know, th their time had come and passed, but <laughs> now when you look at these results, I mean, you know, I'm looking right here at a 71 Plymouth Cuda convertible, a V-code, Nine hundred and sixty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, somebody wants that car, you know. <laughs> we saw the Superbird, the Hemi Superbird that went through Harrisburg a couple years back. Yeah, that did four twenty. I believe that was the same car back then, and it did. Now it did five hundred and some five, thousand. Yeah. Uh, Carroll Shelby's Cobra broke the bank. I mean, Which, it's a world record. I mean, we've seen that article now flowing all over the internet, right. and the bidding wars that that got into, and the final sale price on that was around six million dollars uh, with the commissions. With the fees, yeah. I'm looking here at, you know, 69 Camaro, Z01. Uh, they were down for quite a while. I mean, they weren't doing anywhere near the 825000 that this one sold for. Uh, Even I was looking at some of the newer stuff because, as we said, he does a lot of the, the older stuff, my dad, and I'll do the newer stuff. I was seeing some C6 Z06s with 60,000 miles bringing almost $40,000 all in. There was an 07 uh, GT 500 convertible under 100 miles, which was 57 grand, which is near sticker. Um, back in 07, that was the first year for the KR convertible. But when you really think about it, we just had the Viper. We we're, were asking sticker. So a lot of those cars now that are getting to that 14, 15 year time span, yeah. and we've seen them even being advertised. Everyone's asking sticker or even maybe a little bit above because, yeah. you know, where, where are you going to find these cars? I mean, here, I'm, <laughs> I keep going back to this. I'm looking at a 77 Trans Am Bandit Edition. It looks like 84700, uh, a restored car, not an unrestored, you know, incredible. incredible. And that's impression. what we were thinking. The Resto Mods Pro Touring, is that kind of just the niche now for the classic cars? And every car that kind of went across the block with with documentation, uh, matching numbers, it still did yeah, big money. If they were award-winning cars, uh, documented, you know, matching numbers with documentation and, uh, you know, top award winner, they they did the money. I mean, they did all of it. Uh, I'm looking here at a 2013 Corvette anniversary, 16th anniversary. Again, no miles, 30 miles, but 92,400. That's one when we first went through the results and I was looking at some of the cars that went through, and that particular car jumped out at me. It was like, wow, 90-some grand, which is about sticker on that car. I, I, were they that even I, that high? Yes, I think some of them were. I didn't take a look at sticker, but just uh, off I, the top of my head, I'm thinking that was right around sticker price. I mean, here, here you have a 76 Monte Carlo. Beautiful car, green, white top, white interior, buckets in a console, but, you know, 33 grand. I mean, that's a car that most people can afford, but... You know, I've owned them when they were new for five grand. You and know? I was looking at some of the Lincolns in the 70s. I put, yeah, put it up to you and uh, mentioned it to you. And I said, because I don't know that market at all. And it was like 44 grand. And we looked at it and you said, there must be no miles on it. I think it was like 21, 22,000 miles. So yeah. no matter what you were bringing if here. It, if it was really nice quality and uh, 
Boy, I'll tell you, they're a strong money. Their sell, their sell through rate we talked about. Yeah, we have our notes here of uh, things we wanted to talk about. We said with over 3,000 cars being run, we think that the sell rate was probably without having any data, you know, to yeah, back it up. Guessing. We're just we're guessing. Uh, somewhere between 70 and 80 percent. I'm here looking on a page right now and out of 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30 cars. Out of 30 cars on the page, there's one, two, three that didn't sell out of 30, just on this one. Just on that one page. page, you know? So that's a 70 percent. And you got everything. You're looking at Ferraris. I got a Hertz right. Mustang, yeah, a Prowler, a new 40th or 50th anniversary Mustang, a 442 Oldsmobile, Resto Mods, a newer Corvette Grand Sport Convertible. Uh, I believe that was a Centennial Edition. A Resto Mod truck, which we said the Resto Mod trucks are up still. Yeah, they're still there. I mean, I'm looking at Pontiac, Chevys, Buick, 442, W3. They're all doing money. Mustangs, uh, new ones, old ones. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, you know. It, it It's incredible. Here's a 64 Galaxy 500 XL R code, 94600, hardtop. And we said now it's going to be tough to buy. If you better have bought in your inventory yeah. before the results of this show because now, and we've experienced, you know, throughout the years, but yeah. I don't remember a market as strong as the one we're currently in right now. Uh, the only time I can say that it was close to that, I believe this, or, you know, equal, or it was uh, 06, 07. Cars were uh, very breaking banks then, too. And, and, and that was a big like, Hemi craze, and we, we were talking about yes, that the other night. Yes, yes, yes. you were, remember, does that have a Hemi in it? The commercials were everywhere. Um, and that is reminiscent of that time. Obviously, I was much younger, but I remember um, the Superbirds that we had. But yeah. I don't remember it being this strong because that was more Mopar based and other things. Yeah, this is well. more widespread. This is so across the board. Uh, you know, everywhere. And but you know what? If you're if you're the fortunate people that have money in the stock market, or people were buying bitcoins. I know friends of mine bought Bitcoin vested when it was low. I mean, a lot of people have made a lot of money over the last year and two. now they're spending it and they're spending it i think they covid brought out like hey you're only going to live so long and you can't take and that was on the news the other night we were talking about it 20 percent of people are, are or 2020 i forget not 20 percent, but 2020 came about where so many people were just spending at a ridiculous volume on on things that they wanted and you saw it here at the auction and it really shouldn't be that much of a surprise because we were getting calls, and everybody we talked to, our own inventory, everybody was selling everything yeah, they could selling. get their hands on. Yeah. They, they couldn't get enough cars. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, it was just a, you know, a, a burp. The new cars weren't being produced as quickly because of COVID. That's what we heard a lot of. So a lot of used cars were going up. That didn't really tell me that the collector car market was going to be the same. We thought maybe it was a turning of the page. Like, is it time for the cars of... The 60s and 70s. Well, yeah, to fade away. And but more towards the newer stuff. No, but. that's not happening. It, I guess it's like the Duesenbergs. They never faded away. And the resto mods. I'm looking here. 385, oh, 400 great. and some. Like, they're and just doing crazy, crazy numbers. Money. In incredible amount of money. I mean, it's just... People love their cars. And that's th that hasn't changed at all. And if they have disposable income, they're, they're going to buy what they like and enjoy it. Can't take the money with you. There's no hearse behind the... There's no... You haul behind the hearse. <laughs> From uh, our our boy uh, Denzel, big Denzel Washington. Yeah, no, that. you haul behind the hearse. You but even somebody it. who buys that Shelby Cobra, you know, they have five point nine million in it now. Like down the road, that's probably going to be worth more than it was now. It's hard to say, but but usually that seems to be the trend. Yeah, a, an iconic car like that particular one that was owned by Carol. You got to think that's gonna appreciate in time i'm looking at a 57 chevy bel air convertible fuel injected 165,000. that's i, I don't know how about the ta we were talking about the ta oh yeah the ta challengers that they're 150 some yeah. that did how about yours the, the 2015 shelby gt i thought that after i went through every car on the docket literally every page from the start of the auction to the end the one car that I thought was a good buy, in my opinion, was a 2015 GT350R. For anyone who's familiar, they only made 37 of those R models in 15, and it was a commemorative edition for the 50th anniversary back in 65. And this particular car, I think it had like 70 miles, uh, one of seven in the color scheme, 
and it did 115 all in. And I thought if you're, even now I think that car is worth a little bit more in my opinion, but if that's a car that you want to hold as an investment and kind of tuck away, I don't think that you're going to go wrong on a car like that. I'm looking here, a 206 Hummer H1, $220,000. How about the uh, Shelby Viper we wrote down to that we wanted to talk about? Yeah, the about. prototype, yeah. 230 some thousand dollars. I didn't know what it would do, but I, I thought that was more than what I would have put on it. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't know how to gauge that, but I didn't think it would go that high. I'm looking at a 69 Mustang Mach 1 428 Super Cobra Jet. 162,250. I mean, incredible. Another one that got a lot of buzz that we saw was the resto mod. Was it the Charger or the Challenger, the green one? Oh, that was a Charger. Did yeah. 300 and some 385,000 or better, and all we, in. We saw one in Harrisburg, real nice black one go through and did 180 some. Yeah. And they wound up selling that too, right? Yeah, yeah. This Not this past August, it was last August because everything was shut down with COVID. Um, which leads me to my clo our closing thoughts. Like, where do you think all this goes for? you know the future say the next six months to a year uh if the country can settle down and things calm down from all this political back and forth and stuff i think it's no nowhere but up i mean the markets you know the economy will come back covid will kind of die out hopefully with the vaccines it's kind of like the pent-up energy that we saw with the real estate boom we had so yeah. many people who couldn't go buy a house because everything was shut down and then once everything opened up and the floodgates opened where you had so many buyers for those particular homes, the, the real estate market. There wasn't spiked, enough homes. Where now I think so many people are so eager to get out, get to car shows, to buy some toys. And like you mentioned before, to kind of live a little bit more than they were before. They're not so worried about saving every nickel and dime that they want to enjoy you know, their, their toys a little bit. Here's my opinion for what it's worth. All these cars that sold for these big numbers, these guys aren't going to resell these cars tomorrow. No. They're going to have to collect these and sit on them for a while. So or they're going to enjoy them. Yeah, and enjoy them. But these cars are going to be off the market. Yeah. So there's, you know, 3, close to 3,000 cars. that Not are everyone sold. But. Right. That are no longer on the market. So as the market gets smaller and the buyers are there, Prices are, are going to stay high. And I'm looking here on a 2017 Ford Mustang Richard Petty Tribute Edition, number two of 43. It did 95 grand. We had one. We were trying to help one of our friends sell. Yeah. Had no action on it during the, the, during uh, the summer. Cold. Yeah, that was. I think the, he actually did wind up selling it, but he was only looking to get in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, now the next big auction, uh, if they can pull it off, will be Barrett Jackson, Scottsdale. In Scottsdale in March. I think that's in March. And they got to be. Real happy with what they've, oh, seen, with what they've seen. What they've seen here, yeah, absolutely. But that's kind of what we talked about. We wanted to put it on film for you guys, ha kind of have a little bit of a background of what we think, where we think the market's at. Um, you know, comment on what you guys thought of what you saw. And we don't mind doing this on uh, some bigger auctions as it's going uh, in the future. Kind of sit down and give you guys our analysis. Yeah, I mean, we might go over this one. Beacom has another one January 22nd and 23rd. Muscle Car City, Punta Gorda, Florida, 200 vehicles. They're, you know, mostly GMs, it looks like to me, but I looked at some of the docket. There are really some spectacular cars there, and I'm sure they're going to sell for high dollars. And their next one is uh, Glendale, and that's in March. So hopefully things start getting a little better by March, and people can get out more and uh, get the crowds back. And I think we could have a really great year this year. I agree. And thank you for everybody for watching. Again, if you have yet to sub subscribe to our channel, do so. Turn on post notifications for all those who have subscribed. Thank you. We got a lot more coming uh, with, with some new inventory we have and some stuff that we've kind of uh, had on the back burner that we're excited to release. So um, if you haven't already, subscribe and we look forward to seeing you guys again. Anything you want us to touch on, send us an email. We'll take a look and try to discuss it. That's it.